All right, we are live. Welcome, everyone, to the yeah, week yeah, yeah, yeah. five leading into week six episode of The Blitz, hosted by yours truly, Dylan Perone. Our commissioner is not here today, but do not worry because we have a very special guest who we've been longly awaiting to join the podcast who could not make it last week for an unknown circumstance. Say hello to the people, Juju. Yes, sir. Woo-hoo. That was my hello. All right, so uh, we got Juju. Uh, we have Baby Sal coming to help us co-host um, because the commissioner, Weezer, is absent today. Um, we have a oh, nice, nice show nice. planned for everybody. Uh, Baby Sal is trying to get his camera camera working. It is now 9.37. The show started at 8.30. Um, and that shows you uh, Baby Sal's promptness. Um, junior, first, before we get into the rankings, as we normally do, I'm going to need... To Need, I'm going to need you to explain to everybody why you could not make it to last week's podcast that you were scheduled to partake in. Well, simply, I was um, I was on call, and I was not expecting to take a stroke patient all the way down to the review. So that took about two hours, and therefore I cannot make the blitz. And Sal kicked me and put someone else in my place. I don't remember who it was. It was Luke. So uh, yeah, so for everyone, you, you know where Junior's uh, loyalty lies between this fantasy league and, and his so called career. So career. Uh, baby Sal, everyone, Baby Sal just joined us. Say hello to the people. Hey, hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome to the Blitz. This is week five going into week six. Uh, very excited to help co-host and uh, have good old Juju on the stream this today. What's going on, Junior? What's going on? Yeah. Uh, Apparently we're both on the downloads file, so this should be an exciting uh, podcast. I'm excited. Before we start um, how we normally do, I would be remiss if I did not ask Junior uh, to speak on behalf of the blockbuster trade that was made um, just two to three weeks ago now. Um, He traded me Nick Chubb for Austin Eckler and Christian Kirk. I already said my piece on it on my – on that week version of the podcast, we wanted to have Junior on the following week, but obviously, as we just heard, he could not make it. So we have him here now. Junior, explain to the people your thought process, what you think of the trade as a whole, how you think it was going to benefit your team, what you think about it now, what you think about all the controversy that sparked after, and basically, you know, just say your piece, man, because we know a lot of a lot of shit went down. Well, first off, obviously, this has to be one of the most controversial trades in all of fantasy football history. This this broke up families, this broke up friendships, and it was out, out of control, all because of a stupid trade. And I think it was a pretty good trade. Um, personally, after looking at it now, I think I could have gotten more for Nick Chubb than I actually did. I, I mean, I got, I got Eckler and I got uh, Kirk, who was hurt the past two weeks. But, I mean, other than that, I, th- I think I could have got someone else on top of Eckler instead of Christian Kirk for Nick Chubb, who's obviously a beast. And, of course, after the first week I gave him to you, he uh, 41 points, and that started a lot of controversy as well. But on top of it, Eckler was there also and, and put up a lot of points. And, of course, the day after the trade, I mean, uh, Gordon came back, and, and everyone was concerned that he was going to get the full reps. But if you look at it this week, uh, week five, uh, Eckler was on top of all three. Eckler scored more than Gordon, scored more than Chubb. I mean, you got to look at it this way. as a full PPR league, and Eckler comes into play, especially in, in PPR. He gets a lot of receptions. I would say more receptions last game than he did uh, carries. But that's just my opinion. All right. So, uh, yeah, we're a couple, a couple weeks off that, but I wanted to make sure Junior got a chance to voice his opinion on that. Um, we're not going to beat the dead horse. The season has moved on. Most of the relationships that were tainted have been rekindled. And we're going to jump right into the rankings, guys. Um, we, uh, I have a very special announcement. Um, previous last place ranking holder Joey has acquired his first victory. <laughs> Everyone clap it up for Joey. Joey acquired his first victory. So Joey is not in last place in this week's power rankings. We are starting this week's power rankings. Yep, that's right. One and four. Joey changed his team name and everything. It's official. One and four. Um, so we're going to start this week's power rankings with number 12. Coming in at number 12 is now the only winless team, the dual commissioner team. Some say two heads are better than one. Some say the more the merrier. I think both of those claims are disproved right now um, because the two previous league champions are found themselves winless. 
through the first five weeks of the season. Baby Sal, what are your thoughts on this team? Um, we've been talking about it all year long. Do you think they can dig themselves out of this hole, or is it too late? Um, yeah, guys. Real quick, uh, do you still see my audio? Yeah. Well, we can hear you. you and can't we can't see you. Can't see it. We can All hear right, it. Guys, sorry, because I'm only on my phone. I can't. I have to jump back and forth. But um, uh, as far as Joey's team, I, I, I personally thought he had some upside to his team. Like we talked about, he, he had an excellent draft. He had a rough start um, between Tyreek Hill and a bunch of other, other injuries. Um, but it looks like some people are getting healthy. Tyreek practiced today. Uh, there's, I think, a Hunter Henry sign, uh, sighting. He might be on his way back. Um, but if you look up, la- uh, look at last week's matchup, he, uh, he only pulled it off by 13, but sometimes that, that's, that's just enough to get things going. He, uh, he versed a, a hot team in, in Nico, who apparently uh, has the entire uh, Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And Mike, Mike Evans did goose egg. Um, but so did Sammy Watkins, and so did Greg Olson for Joey. So it was kind of a back-and-forth battle. And um, I think Matt Ryan uh, really pulled it off for Joey. But, again, quarterbacks can do that. That's why you pick the top five quarterbacks high. Um, they kind of have a, a nice floor for your team. Uh, I don't. I. I. I I'm. T- I, it kind of sucks that the the Olsen pick is isn't pickup isn't paying off for Joey, but I, I think you stay patient there. Uh, Tyree comes back this week, and I, I think he's fine. He's playing me, which is the uh, interesting part for me. I think it's gonna be. I think it's gonna be a showdown. I don't think it's an easy victory. I'll tell you that much. He's on. He's definitely on the up and up. Uh, my team actually. I, I can't leave thirty points on the bench in order to probably beat him. So we'll see. All right, so we got uh, so we so we do have big boy and 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 Ant right below Joey, obviously because Joey got his first win, so he's coming in at number eleven. But uh, Junior, what do you think about your brother's team? Um, do you think he can dig him dig his way out of this hole and then maybe touch on Joey a little bit? Um, thank you for laying the groundwork for that, baby Sal, and, and let me know what you think about those two squads before we move into the uh, the next part of the ranks. Where's Junior's hey, audio? Junior? Can you hear me? Yes, sir. No, I got out for a little bit. And my my whole thing just shut down on me. Just just confirm here. No you problem, said Anthony's problem. sitting at twelve, right? In the power rankings. Yeah, big big is sitting at twelve, and then after that is Joey, um, at eleven. Joey happens to be playing Baby Sal this week, so he touched on Joey a little bit. You want to touch on your brother's team? Um, what do you think? You know, if they can make it out of this hole, are you surprised by the zero five start? Um, he is a four, former league champion, and uh, uh, what do you think is going to go on from here? Personally, I'm extremely surprised about the 0-5 star, not only by uh, not just because of the team, but I'm talking about coming off from a championship season to 0-5. I mean, you're at the bottom of the box worse than Don. I mean, Don usually picks the entire Giants off, and, and this year, he, I mean, he's on top. He's, he's sitting, I think, six in the standings, and now you got Anthony, co-managers, who everyone was kind of concerned about. Um, they're sitting at the bottom here, and I mean, I don't, I don't see too much on the team. I mean, Evan Ingram, obviously, it's, it's one of the best tight ends so far this season, but he's out this week, so that's that's a loss. Uh, Joe Mixon, obvious start every week, um, so that's a plus. Devontae Adams, uh, to me, is is a bust. I mean, he's got his good games, but I mean, I haven't seen much out of him personally. I, I don't know. I, he just doesn't surprise me. Um, DK Metcalf, I like him. But, like I said, I mean, he doesn't really have much talent going on here. I mean, Yeah, we're going to have to eliminate some of that background noise as well. <laughs> yeah. I'll, you want me to shut the bird up? <laughs> Everyone, well, thank It sounds you. like Bingo has a lot to say about Big Boy's team. So. He, he's agreeing with me that 0-5 is, is not too good here. I mean, um, for, for any team to start 0-5, that's um, not an easy task, even yeah, if you almost tried to. Fine. You really um, can't. But, you know, the season's not over, so. I had a rough season after I won too. So, I mean, it might uh, be just it might just be that uh, the kind of the curse of winning a, a season. You know, I mean, the first winner obviously got kicked out of the league. I won a season. I didn't even make the playoffs. Look at and then now look at what Anthony's at this season. Might be a plague for the uh, LKI league. So. Yeah, I mean, I mean, zero and five is going to be tough coming out of. Uh, I mean, for sure. But I mean, to touch on Joey's team a little bit. I, I don't know. I don't know what's going on there. I mean, he thought he gave up a little bit to get his first win. Is huge. I mean, if you look at, at the line to have all the waiver wires, and, and he's got sixty dollars remaining. I mean, my question is: is where did all that money go? Like, who did he pick up on the waiver wires that he's sixty dollars remaining? I I just don't see. I know one. 
team. You know what I mean? Right. I mean, and and Marquez Valdez. I mean, he definitely stole him from me in the draft. We all know that's big controversy. I'll never let that one go. But right now, he's he's not proven. Personally, I I think he should trade him away while he has value. You know, start. Well, he had had three starters completely get hurt. Right. Yes. Oh, yeah. That's another thing. Henry, Tariq Hill, and I forget the third, but those are alone are big hits. Yeah, I mean, this is his second year in a row. I mean, last year he had David Johnson's first round pick that got hurt and he was out. I think for the whole season. Now he's tired to kill the same thing week one. Uh, so he's he's definitely got a loss of that for two years in a row. But I don't know. He he's got he got he's got some work to do. It's just one win. It was a big win, and if he can't pull it off against me this week, a one in five is not going to be an easy sitting in either. So still no, not in no. good shape. <clears throat> Bottom of the barrel. Yes, sir. Well, we you might, we guys, might have our championship for the uh, losers' funny thing right there for those two. You guys covered that pretty well. I don't need to touch on know. anything else with that. Um, these two guys have kind of been the bottom of the barrel for the past couple weeks now, so we don't want to beat the dead horse on that. Um, coming in at number ten, kind of a shock to me. Um, he had one of the better drafts coming into the league. We keep saying that we think he's going to bounce back. We keep saying we see potential in his team, but last week just wasn't wasn't the week for him. Um, he came up with me. He hit a brick wall. My team went off. His team only dropped 114, which I think um, oh, Chris. was the second lowest in the league. Yes. Uh, we got Luca Duccio coming in at number 10. Um, ninth in <laughs> overall rankings on points for, but um, 10th in our power ranks. Um he is uh, two and three. Um, yeah, like I said, I think he had a couple studs that he drafted that aren't producing right now. Julio Jones is not putting up wide receiver one value. Sony Michelle has been has been um, a little bit disappointing. He's only scored one or two touch. Oh, okay, he's got three touchdowns, but he's only broken ten pan ten fantasy points twice. Um, I like the Travis Kelsey pick. I think that's probably his most consistent scorer right now, but. Other than that, he's got some big names on his team, but they're not producing. Um, I couldn't tell you why. Um, but between Kelsey and New England defense, those those are the guys that Luca Duccio is riding on. And other than that, man, I don't see as much promise in his team as I did when we left draft night. Um, and I think the days might be numbered for him if he doesn't get uh, his act together, maybe make some pickups. I don't know what you guys think, but I expected him to be doing a lot better than he <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to look through the history of, like, where how we got to here. I think that's a big thing we all need to look at. Um, obviously, that takes more time than, you know, just doing it real quick. But, um, I, I mean, Julio Jones and, and Fitzgerald, they've been great for a long time. But I think that's the key thing is, is it's, it's a long time. You know, it's a new league, a new younger running backs. And Sony Michelle obviously has been a disaster this year, but you know, Philip Lindsay is, is a young star. Um, Kelsey is, has been, he's, he's been his go, you know, go-to, like you said. <clears throat> I mean, but is New England going to put up enough points to help you win games, you know, inconsistently? That doesn't, that doesn't make sense. Um, it does help, but um, I'm, I'm trying to look through his week one to week five. So junior, if you want to jump on that real quick, I want to see if I can find something more to the, to the tail here. Yeah. I mean, I definitely say just kind of line up. He's got some people. I mean, Jameis Winston, um, personally, I'm not starting him against Carolina. Um, without Mike Evans being available, I mean, what, I, what I mean by that is Carolina's going to lock him down. Just like the Saints did, they're going to double team him. They're going to lock him down without having Evans and Godwin, who's an absolute monster. Together, Jameis Winston's not going to be able to do anything. I, I just don't see him. I mean, you have Bradbury, but it's not going to work. If, if he can't get targets off to Mike Evans and um, – Godwin in the, in the same matchup. There's no way he's breaking 20 fantasy points. I mean, you might think I'm crazy, but there's just no chance. And and uh, Panthers are definitely going to double team Evans and take him out of the game. Possibly be another goose egg, but we'll see. Um, but on the opposite side of that, where I'm I'm going to say DJ Moore is definitely going to start against the Wolf Bucks uh, secondary, and and Sony Michelle is a must start against the Giants. I mean, they're an absolute disaster, and I, th- I think they'll be able to get something going, especially. And once they're up in the lead in the second half, they're just probably just going to run it and, and just suck for that lead, I guess. Um, but I like Julio Jones. I think that, I think that's awesome. Travis Kelsey is definitely one of the best tight ends. I guess that's a plus. Um, other than that, he is a pretty good team. I think, I think he has potential. It's just 
They just all got to show up at once pretty much. So he he did have two very good weeks. Um, one week was mediocre, but the matchup plays a factor, you know? Mm-hmm. Could have had 114 and played someone that tanked. Um, didn't get that lucky. But he, but I think the bottom line is he still is two and three, uh, uh, Dill. Uh, um, right. I don't I don't get caught up on points for too much, especially because it's only five weeks in. I mean, if, if you can get things corrected, even me, you, you could change that. Um, you know, <laughs> you don't want to dig yourself too far in the hole. Um, so I'm not just looking at that. I, I try to look at each week. Uh, what I may be looking at his schedule going forward, starting this week, real quick. I mean, he's got Chris Hansen. That could be an easily get to three to three. Um, and then try to get over 500 by playing Don. I mean, he, if he wants to get over 500, he could do it in these next two weeks. So um, I know he's not going to give up. Clearly, he's not a, he's not that type of kid. So um, yeah, I mean, it, his, his players are underperforming. Uh, there's not there's no injuries really. I think that's what it's coming down to. I mean, maybe look at your depth. Look at, I mean, this is a team that I think personally that can help from trades, right, Bill? I mean. If Julio Jones is underperforming, you know, it's a lot of value. Maybe get two for one. I don't, I don't know. You know, get someone with a better floor for now. You know, two people that can that can give you some consistent points. I don't know. I think trading would be an outlet for him. Absolutely, I, I agree with that. Yeah, I think that he's got some players, but you know, the uh, the clock is ticking a little bit. Um, he's still he's out, yeah. not out of it, obviously. But yeah, like you said it best, Sal. His He's got good players, but they're not producing, and that's fantasy sometimes. And, you know, the guys that you expect to go off don't. And sometimes these sleeper guys are the ones that put up the most points. So you got to make moves. Um, yeah. He's he's not the type of guy to sit down. Oh, cool. um, I, would, I would expect him to start using some of his waiver budget. He has uh, is the second most waiver budget left out of anyone. The only person that has more waiver budget left than him is Don. Um, who we're going get, to get, get into next. So, yeah, I think Luke um, yeah. should probably use some of that waiver uh, budget. Maybe make some real, moves. Real quick, so we'll before we move on from him, uh, just because especially you touched on that waiver thing. Um, of course, you want to maintain your budget for when you need it. But uh, I, I personally, my perspective, the waiver wire does start to dry up now as it is. Um, that's, I mean, maybe why I more shoot for the guys in week one, two, and three that hopefully are, are going to blow up and not just blow up, you know, once. Like, okay, so I went off to Robinson and Chark um, and John Ross, uh, who ended up getting injured. Robinson is now a bust. And Tyreek's coming back, but Chark paid off. You know what I mean? So I was looking for the one payoff. Um, that's why I spend my budget early. I, I mean, he obviously is on the opposite plan. So I know you guys got on me for that, but you know, either way, you, you do got to spend it. So you know, go out there and, and use it. Um, just don't spend it. You know, I, I don't think me spending forty dollars one player was worth it. I kind of fucked up there. You know, I, I didn't know where the where the, the norm was going to be, so I didn't find myself there. Um, and then lastly, too, I mean. Like I said, two and three, he's, he's going to be a playoff contending team. He's going to be on the bubble at worst case. So it's a team we're, we're going to see compete. So that's really it. Um, well said, especially about that part with the waiver budget. A lot of people need to be back in consideration. One person in, in particular is our next up on the list. We got Anthony Donahue with the decline trades. His record is three and two. He's in sixth place, um, but he is coming in at number nine on our power rankings. Um, let me see. He is very fortunate. If I correct me, if I'm wrong, uh, yeah, Anthony Donahue has the least points against in the entire league. So therefore, he has the easiest schedule. You can only rely on that for so long. Um, we we we've been talking about this all season. Um, he had a good draft, but his managing spells have been poor. He waited till now to act on it, and that's why if you look at his lineup, he's got Preston Williams starting. Demarcus Robinson starting, Byron Pringle starting, three players that aren't even rostered in most leagues because he waited until the last minute to make some moves. I guess it's better now than ever. He's got two injured guys on his bench. He's got Deshaun Jackson, who's probably doubtful. He's got three tight ends on his roster. I, I don't know when this guy's going to learn. He had a great draft. I'd hate to see him ruin it. He's lucky to be 3-2. and two. Um, He's got a big week versus Luke Ligori, who's coming off a tough loss, so I'm sure he's going to be coming back with vengeance. Um Don in the last playoff spot right now, but I don't see him keeping that spot if he's going to continue to manage his way. What do you guys think? I'm going to, I'm going to agree with you there. I mean, just looking at his team alone, and nothing pops out. I mean, definitely not a playoff team. There's just no way. Um, personally, I mean, you got Shepard out this week. You got Connor. He's, a, he's an RB1, but it just doesn't put up enough points. 
uh, in my opinion here. Tom Brady, he puts up points, but not not enough to keep winning uh, these games throughout the year. Um, and personally, if you have anybody on the on the Miami Dolphins starting as your wide receiver one, especially Preston Williams, you're just desperate. I mean, it just doesn't get any worse than that. I mean, he should be a flex at, at most. But, I mean, like I said, there's nothing popping out here that says playoffs. I don't see him lasting top six much longer. What do you think, Sal? Yeah, I mean, so I'm just going to start on the kid. Um, I think we have a really intelligent group of, of, of family and friends in this in this league. Like, really intelligent uh, for the most part. Um, and I think he might be the smartest of all of us, Don, as a person. And I'm learning that uh, more recently. Um Fantasy, obviously, not so much, and I'm not understanding that. Um, maybe just not as focused on that as other things. I don't, I'm not sure, uh, but I, I think you have to respect the kid for for where he's at because where, where is he placed right now? I, sixth I place. Look at it. Yeah, he's in sixth place, and he's three. He is over 500, um, so he's he's not only in the playoffs, he's looking pretty good right now. Um, so I mean, that that's really big for Don as a person, right? Like, he, he's never even been in the mix, I think, for the playoffs. Right? He's always been on the right. outside fighting to not be a, a, a freaking, you know, punishment guy. So, I mean, this is big for him, but he can't let it go because he, he management is going to kill him. Bill hit that right on the head. He's yeah. going to get, he's going to get beat, biting in the ass for, for fucking management. And, um, just, and we've just, talked yeah. about it. I think he's trying to do some things from where we talked the first time, me and your deal. Um, I don't know if they're the right things, but, uh, He's got to. He's got to learn what the right things are. Maybe, you know. Um, I do see moves that that were done though. He's got three tight ends on on his roster here. Yeah, I mean, we talked about that the first time. I, yeah. I don't think I've seen that. I, that that alone kind of just. <laughs> throws I, I have done it recently. This because I am streaming a tight end and one's on IR now. So, I, I I get that, but I mean these are three healthy tight ends. That's a reason. You know what I mean? Yeah, he's just he's been holding on to three tight ends with right. Kittle. I'm, I'm, uh, I think he was Kittle, I don't, I don't Kittle's know, I a tight end. I don't, I don't see why you have Kittle now. So drop, drop Eifert, um, and and even Rudolph. I mean, and and stream the drop tight end. Drop both of them, please. Please I'm... drop both of them. All right. And and wait, wait, here we go. Okay, so he has two. Shepard, what's what Shepard's injury, boys? Do we know? Uh, doubtful to play this week. He should be back for next week. Okay, so now he's got. He's forced to either put either him or AJ Green on the on the waiver. Uh, that's kind of or IR. But yeah. You know, I mean, we could say that's taking up a spot, but at the same time, he could be he could have two spots by dropping those tight ends. So we're gonna keep beating a dead horse by telling him to drop two people and, and pick up more depth. But you know, right. tough to end the lesson. So. Um, I would like to quote Baby Sal for like he said um, before uh, when we were talking about our last rank. He talked about how he spent a lot of his waiver budget. We were talking about Luke. He said that he spent a lot of his waiver budget early on. Because he feels that within the first couple of weeks is where you really get a feel for if he's going to break out. After that, toward the middle and end of the year, the waiver wire gets thinner. Um, we noticed that Don has made some pickups, and it looks like he did it last week. But like Baby Sal said, that may have been too late, and which is why Baby Sal personally made some moves early on. Um, if Don would have had maybe taken our advice a couple weeks earlier, Don also told me that he did not listen to the first couple weeks of the Blitz where he would have known this. <laughs> maybe he, maybe the waiver wire wouldn't be so thin, and he could have gotten somebody like a DJ Shark yeah. instead yeah. of something like Pringle, who is probably yeah. not going to play football yeah. again once Tyree Kill and Sammy Watkins are healthy. However, yeah. he's making moves. I guess it's never too late. Um, it's better better than starting a, a an injured guy or an empty slot. But yeah, those tight ends got to go, and and that's all I got for him. Um, I think we ought to, everyone's got to understand that we're, we do this for fun, of course, but we also doing it to neutrally kind of get together and help everybody. It's not like we're trying to knock on anyone by doing the blitz. It's actually, it's actually information or, uh, you know, you could use it as information to help yourself. I can't find the right word for it right now, but 